And you know what? The thing about Western medicine is this. It heals something, but kills something else. Diba? It's good for your liver, but it'll kill your kidneys. But bread and wine, you can't overdose. Diba? You can't overdose. And if you forget, it's okay. You don't forget, it's okay. You don't have to worry. And you can buy it anywhere, even a sari-sari store. Try buying amoxicillin in a sari-sari store. You can't. And you know what? This is the best part. You don't need a doctor's prescription. It's over-the-counter bread and wine. Very easy. And it's the simple things that Jesus likes to use. You know why? So everyone can afford it. Everyone can afford it. It doesn't matter whether you're rich or you're poor. When you're in Christ and you take communion, you have access to healing. You have access to healing. That's the, see how simple God is? You know, God is so simple that something like bread and juice or wine. And this is another thing. In Western medicine, and I know we have doctors here. Dr. Angel is sitting here in front. There are certain uh, medical conditions that are, as of today, incurable, right? There are bread and the wine can cure any disease. Amen? Amen? Because in Christ, nothing is incurable. Nothing is incurable. It doesn't matter whether it's HIV, it's AIDS, it's SARS, or a headache. It doesn't matter. Makes no difference. Medicines. Okay? No, 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 no. Don't do that. You continue taking your medicines, but take communion first. Until the doctor says, hey, you know what? You're healed. This is supposed to be incurable, but you're cured. I don't know what happened. Uh, doc, bread and juice. <laughs> bread and juice. Huh? You know, and then let them study it. Let them start. Now you can share with them about your faith. Because in Christ, all things, all diseases don't stand a chance. The Bible says every knee will bow. Amen? At the mention of that name. So here, let's look at this. So we take it at night with bitter herbs. You shall eat. Do not eat it raw. Okay? Is this. It, oh, sorry. It must be roasted in fire. You can't, you can't take it, you know, uh, what's this called again? Ihao, diba? Ihao. It has to be ihao, grilled. You can't take it pan fried. You can't take it any other way. He says it must be roasted in fire. Why? Because fire always speaks of judgment. Fire speaks of judgment. And this piece of meat, the lamb that was slain, Representing now Jesus Christ was judged on the cross. Don't take it any other way. Understand that communion, that piece of bread was broken. It was judged. So you don't have to walk in judgment. That's why you walk in grace. See? You have a choice. Now part of judgment is being broke. Being poor. That's part of judgment. Now, it doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. He still does. That's why there's still so many in the church that are poor. Because they don't understand what Jesus did for them. It says, roasted in fire. Fire always speaks of judgment. And the body of Jesus was judged. Every curse, every guilt, every offense, every transgression was placed on Christ. Remember what we said the last time? That, G that God treated Jesus on the cross as if He were you, so that He, today, He can treat us as if we were Jesus Christ. There was a divine exchange that took place on the cross. Whatever was yours, He took. And whatever is His, He gave and shared. Now, He did not have sickness. He didn't say, I came that you might have sickness. See, he said, no, I came that you might have life, zoe, life, and abundantly at that. So he said, give me your sickness, I give you my life, I give you my health. See, now, you think Jesus will ever get sick? I don't think so. We made that exchange. That is our inheritance. You don't have to get sick. But if you do, 
There's no condemnation. Don't think, I got sick. My gosh, my faith must be so weak for me to get. No, don't condemn yourself. There's the blood. There's the bread. Take it when you're sick. Take it. Or I should say, if you're sick, not when. Because it's not an expectation. Take it. And the Bible says that he renews your youth like an eagle. So you don't have to grow. It's only the numbers that increase. But the wrinkles decrease. Amen? Amen. See, either God was lying or he was telling the truth. The Bible says he renews your youth. He renews your youth. In other words, you don't have to grow old. You don't have to look old. And you don't have to act old. You don't have to. And yet, some people think that he was uh, speaking figuratively. That's our problem. That's our problem. When we think he's speaking figuratively. So watch, he says, first, roasted in fire. Understand that he was judged, so you don't have to be. Second, he says, don't eat it raw. In other words, no carpaccio. You know carpaccio? It's uh, raw beef. Right? Raw beef. No um, kilawin. Okay? No sashimi. I love sashimi. I love kilawin. And I love carpaccio. But when it's communion, it cannot be raw. What does this symbolize? Raw means it's not yet ready. Raw means it's not yet cooked. Right? In other words, some people still like to see Jesus as the cute, sweet baby Jesus. <laughs> you know? Then they like to carry him around and stuff like that. But he says, no, don't eat it raw. Don't look at it as though he's not prepared. This man who died on the cross was mature. He was seasoned. He was ready. He was a man, not a little boy. This is the one that died for us. Don't see him that way. Don't take him raw. That's what this means. He was a full-grown, mature human being. He's the one that went on the cross. It was the man that died for us and saved us, not a boy, not a teenager, but a full-grown man. And the last thing he says is not boiled at all with water. So you can't take nilaga, even though we like nilaga, right? We like nilaga, it tastes good. But he says, no, that's not how you're going to eat it. It has to be sugba, right? Inihau, grilled. That's how you're supposed to take it. What does it mean to boil it? To boil means to water down. Don't water it down. See, there are certain images that have watered down the gospel. Uh, let me give you an example. For example, we have a model for bench, bench body. Okay? That's not what he looked like. He's so clean, so handsome. Right? That's not what he looked like. And it is a misrepresentation of what really happened on the cross. This is too sanitized. Okay? When you have something like this, I mean, he's good looking. Right? He's good looking. The Bible says that there was nothing beautiful, beautiful about him. He was torn. When they put on the crown, they had already pulled off his beard. I made a physiological study on what happened to the body of Christ, the physical human body of Jesus Christ, from the praetorium all the way until when he gave up the spirit on the cross. And what happened to him physically. Remember, he, he was punched in the face while he was blindfolded. They pulled his beard. That would cause his jaw to swell up to twice its size. When they put the thorns on his head, it caused his, 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 the top part of his head to swell up to three times its size. They lacerated and literally tore his back apart. And the book of Psalms says, all my bones were exposed. You, you, you can't see it there. What bone? What bone? There are no bones exposed there. 
He says, all my bones were... Literally what happened was when they whipped him, and you see it in the Passion of the Christ, that's why I think God blessed Mel Gibson, 